Welcome back, everybody, to the Unreal Engine C++ training series. I, like always, am Faro, and today we're going to be talking about overlap events. Overlap events are one of the two major ways that we can actually have objects in our game world interact with each other. And well, what I mean by that is uh, when two objects collide, um, they can actually have uh, one of two properties. They can either overlap, which is what we're going to be talking about today, or they can hit each other, um, which we will not be going over today, but they, the hit events actually do follow a very similar uh, way, of, way of implementing how, how we're going to use them. Uh, so overlap events are going to be used in situations where you uh, maybe you walk into a trigger event and that causes a, a cutscene to play. But what we're going to be using it today for is we're going to be using it to pick up a weapon uh, from our uh, inside of our game world that we can then use uh, to fire. Now I've already gone ahead and created the weapon um, just because it doesn't really have much to do with this tutorial. Um, so what we have here is we've got our weapon uh, we're going to be using a box component for the collision. Um, it will not be ticking. Uh, and here I just initialized it, gave it a size of 50, me uh, 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. Uh, we're going to make sure that the, this collision will generate overlap events. And we're going to set the collision to the root component of, uh, of the object. Then I just went ahead and created a blueprint for it so I can easily place it inside of the world. And I gave it um, just the default gun here for the static mesh. Um, you actually have to do a little bit to get that static mesh, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, but yeah, so this there isn't really much here for the weapon besides the the uh, collision that I set up in the CPP file and the static mesh that I set up in the blueprint. Now the way that you would go about making uh, a static mesh out of the gun because the gun is a skeletal mesh is if I navigate over to the, sta or the, the skeletal mesh here what, what you can do is there's actually a button up here at the top is called make static mesh and you can place it anywhere name whatever you want and then static mesh right there for you easy to do you can actually do that with any kind of skeletal mesh you can pose it however you'd like and then basically um, press that button to get a snapshot right of what that skeletal mesh looks like at that point and turn it into a static mesh which is a really nice feature to have all right, now that all that's out of the way, I'm going to get into the code. Now, we're not going to be using the weapon.cpp or .h anymore. We can just get rid of those for now. We're going to be doing all of the code inside of our Unreal uh, tutorial character. Now, in order for this to work, I'm going to have to include, of course, the weapon. So I'm going to include weapon.h. And now we're going to get started with um, one, making sure that, no, let me go back. We are going to start off not having the gun, not being able to fire the gun. And to do this, I'm just going to do a trick to, to make the, the gun invisible and so that it can't fire. We will place our BP weapon blueprint inside of the world like so walk up to it pick it up and be able to use it pretty simple pretty easy and is very very powerful now like always I'm gonna get rid of the fire code because it is annoying I just don't like hearing it directly in my ears because I've got the headphones in all right and now let's get started I want to be able to um, have the gun be invisible at the beginning, so I'm going to come into begin play, and the component is called fp underscore gun. 
I'm gonna set visibility to false. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna make the gun invisible at the start, so basically we don't have it. Um, you'd want to do uh, this in a more robust fashion um, if you were going to do this with different animations and uh, different stuff like that, but that is not the focus of this tutorial. Um, and I actually kind of don't even know how to do that. So um, that's where, that's how we're going to go about this today. And we're going to do, we're going to create another uh, a variable, boolean, it's going to be simple, b can fire. And if the gun is invisible, then we're going to set can fire to false. So if I go ahead and build it, uh, build the comp build the code inside of the editor, we should no longer be able to fire our weapon. We shouldn't we shouldn't even see it. Take a drink of water. All right, there we go. Compile and our gun is invisible. Uh, but we can still fire. Oh, that's because I didn't set it up in the uh, on fire function. So, so if B can fire, I'm gonna go ahead and put all of this inside of the can fire if statement. Now when I compile it and run the code, we should no longer be able to fire. It's always good to do this iterative testing thing because you never really know what part of the code is working unless you are constantly testing it. All right, compile complete. Gun is invisible still, and when I left click, nothing happens. We are no longer firing, and that is exactly what we want for now. Now, we can come back into the tutorial character.cpp, make sure our weapon header is included, and what we're going to do is we're going to come back into begin play, because we're going to need to basically override this event. So normally, uh, in blueprints, if we were to go ahead and do uh, something like this, we could just you know right click in here and say overlap and event begin actor overlap and we can just start doing stuff right away. We can't necessarily do that in C++ because there's a different interface um, a bit a bit lower level um, but but it'll all work out in the end and I'll show you right here. Basically, all we have to do is say on actor begin overlap, which is exactly what it's called over in blueprints. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to add a dynamic function. So a function that is not necessarily known at the time of uh, the program being compiled, right? So I have on actor begin overlap, and I'm going to use the dot operator. And the function that we need is actually not here. It is kind of here um, in the internal add dynamic, but as you can see, there is a note in in this little information box that says do not call this function directly. Instead, call add dynamic, which is a macro proxy function that automatically sets the function name for the string caller. Now what that means is we're going to use add dynamic but we're not going to use that version of add dynamic. Now, why is this right here not inside of um, the recommended functions when we use the dot operator? I don't know. It's um, it's quite interesting actually. It's just the way that they've uh, structured the engine. Okay, so dy uh, add dynamic. It's going to take in two function. Or it's going to take in two parameters. The first parameter it's going to take in is the object that's going to be using this add dynamic, and it's going to be this. We're just going to be using um, the this keyword to specify that it's going to be from this class. 
and then the function name. It's going to work just like it does over with the input bind action. So we've got a reference to a function. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to say that this is called on pickup. This isn't a function that we've created yet, but this is the function that's going to be run. All right. And it's going to give us an error because it's going to say, hey, on pickup, there's no such thing. We can fix that. Next, this it's just going to return void and it's going to be on pickup. And it's going to take in two parameters. And I'll show you, I'll show you how I know that. Um, but it's going to take two actor component or two actor parameters. So it's going to take in the overlapped actor, which is in most scenarios going to be this. It's going to be the character in this situation. And it's going to take in a, a pointer to another actor, and that's going to be the other actor. Now, just to show you that I didn't just make that up on the spot, what I can do is I can go ahead into actor begin overlap. And there are, uh, what we're using actually is, it's called a delegate. I'll give some, uh, some resources in the link, or linked in the description down below uh, to explain a little bit more what delegates are. But basically that's what we're doing. So here we see our on actor begin overlap returns a f actor begin overlap signature. And when we scroll all the way up close to the top of this, this is actually the actor.h, so it's the actor header file. What we're going to find is we're going to find a long list of dynamic multicast delegates. And the one that we're interested in is the same one that we looked at, f actor begin overlap signature. And basically what we need is we need these parameters right here. So we need the overlapped actor parameter and we need the other actor parameter, which is what we've included inside of our tutorial character. Now I'm going to go ahead and create the definition of on pickup. And I'm going to locate that. That's right there. And what we're going to do is we're first just going to test out to see um, if our code works or if, if we set up with this delegate properly. And to do that, we're going to say if we do overlap the weapon, which is the only thing that we're interested in overlapping in at the moment, if other actor is a so we want to see if the other actor is a member of the weapon class. So, uh, or I'm sorry, we want to see if the other actor is, yes, is the other, or is the weapon class that we're actually looking for. So if other actor is a, and I'm going to say a weapon static class, and this is going to basically just return the U class of um, weapon, a weapon. And so if other actor is a weapon class, static class, then we're going to print out to the screen UE log, just like always, log temp, warning, warning, and text. And we're just going to say weapon. All right, easy peasy. Let's compile that. So what we should be expecting is that when we go ahead and look in our output log, when we run over the, the weapon right here, we should see something printed out to the screen. All right, compile complete. I'm just going to go ahead and save this uh, UMAP. And now play. And we're getting some errors over here in the output log. We don't know what that is quite yet. And let's try it. Nope, we are not getting anything. So 
One thing that I'm not a fan of is it's actually really hard to read what this says. Oh, but you can highlight it and it makes it better. So it's looking like there's something wrong with our dynamic delegate. And it's in our begin place. So we can we actually do know that it, there's something wrong with the way that we set up the, the delegate. And the reason is because like most everything that needs to interact with Unreal Engine at a lower level, um, our variables tend to need to be U properties and our functions tend to need to be U functions. U function. So let's go ahead and make sure that turns purple so we know that we typed it correctly. All right, that works. And we compile. And hopefully when we compile, we don't get those error messages that we got last time. Now, why did um, why did the game not you know give us some error messages and not allow us to compile? Once again, that's something that they just chose to do within the engine. I'd like it so that we could get some sort of uh, some sort of runtime error or a compile time error, which is which would be even better. That would say, hey, you didn't make this a U function, um, but that's we got to deal with what we've got right now. So we're gonna go ahead and run over it. And we got our warning message, weapon. Sweet, so now we know that our overlap is working. So now what we can do is we can actually finish writing the rest of our um, on pickup function. So if the other actor is a class of, or is in the weapon class, what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to, I'm gonna look, go into begin play and copy these. And we're just going to set these to true. So we're going to set visibility to true. And we're going to set B can fire to true. We also don't want to be able to run over um, that gun multiple times, at least for this example. So what we can do is we're going to get the other actor, other actor, and destroy it. Simple and easy. Now what we should be able to do is we're going to run into the gun, pick it up, and be able to fire right away. And I really hope this works, because I've been having trouble with this. Compiling. All right, no compiling errors, so that's always a good sign. And then play, we've got nothing, we've got nothing. Sweet, we picked up the gun, the gun's no longer there, and we can fire right away. All right, so now, different ways that you could expand on this. Um, you can have an ammo system, and maybe you have uh, multiple of the same guns uh, around. And you can say something like, if ammo is equal to ammo max, then don't do much at all. But if the ammo is less than ammo max, maybe you take the difference and set the current ammo to the ammo max. That's one way you could do it. Um, you could have it such that um, if you already have that weapon then and you pick it up, then you can do extra damage uh, using the uh, take damage. Uh, and what's the opposite of take damage? Damage. Apply damage. Apply damage. So you can apply more damage than, than usual, all kinds of stuff with that. You could also use this system for uh, trigger, trigger volumes. So maybe you walk into a, a room that's dark and then uh, the light comes on when you walk in and um, all that kind of stuff. So that concludes this tutorial. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, make sure to uh, let me know in the comment section down below or tweet at me at not from Egypt. Maybe next time we'll go over hit events. Maybe we'll expand um, this a little bit further. We'll see. Um, and that'll be it for today. And I will see you in the next one.